looking to play your wild card for game week 24, then here are two drafts with Liverpool getting double and without Liverpool getting a double. Let's get into it. Yo, listen up, Rue is stepping up the game Where fantasy premier league runs in his veins From transfers to captains, he's always on top Guiding you through every game week non-stop They say Rue got that sad up flow Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe Good day, mate, welcome back to the channel I'm FPL Rue and welcome back to another FPL video so in today's video, we're going to be looking at two wildcard drafts. So one with Liverpool and Luton getting their double and one without. So it hasn't been confirmed at time of recording whether they will get their double. So I wanted to build two drafts. So if you were playing your wildcard in game week 24, that you did have a couple options. So the first draft we will talk about is with Liverpool and with Luton doubling. If you are new to the channel, though, please make sure you do subscribe. So first of all, in goal... I've gone for Dubravka. I think at that price point, now that Newcastle can't buy another goalkeeper, I think he will be the number one for them. So, um, yeah, he's going straight into the team, especially at that really, really good price point. I've also gone for Ariola, so very, very cheap um, in this in this goalkeeping option. So hopefully West Ham do end up playing in game week 29. So if Aston Villa get knocked out of the FA Cup to Chelsea, then that means um, that game will go ahead. So... Yeah, I guess with this draft, you are hoping for that to happen. In defence, gone for Trent. So if Liverpool do have a double, then I do really want Trent for that. I think um, if Salah doesn't come back, then I think Trent is a very, very good option to have. Even with Salah back, I'm not too sure he does start both of the uh, games in double game week 25. So maybe worth just going with Trent anyway. I've also gone for Doughty, so the uh, Luton defender. Um, again, he has the double with playing the wild card in game week 24 I think you really do have to load up on double game week players because I guess that's the main reason why you're playing it is to is to really really utilize that double and I think it probably is important to have the option to play bench boost in game week 25 too as you've literally just played the wild card but we'll talk about that later on in the video where I do look at the game week 25 team also gone for Ake so you could potentially go for Walker but I do think Ake should be nailed for Man City, I know um, he has some some competition around that um, defensive centre back position, also left back. But I think he should play centre back or left back, um, to be honest. And I think he's probably one of the most nailed ones in this City team. I know Carl Walker again could could rival that, but he did get um, benched for game week twenty two, which I'm not too sure whether that was for a basically personal issue. So he has some issues at home or. Um, it was because Pep is resting him, but I've gone for Ake for now. Also on the bench, I've gone for Pinnock. Again, a double game week, albeit um, with Liverpool and Man City. Um, he, yeah, I do think it is worth going for the doubles if you are going to wildcard in 24. Also, Estupinen, who just has really good fixtures, to be honest, coming up. Midfield, um, we'll start off with the bench with Ganacho. So just one of the cheapest midfielders that actually plays and can get attacking returns. Probably won't pay that much, but he could be useful for a bench boost in game week 25. Also in midfield, Anthony Gordon. Again, I just like the fixtures a lot over the next two, um, even over the next four with Wolves at home in between um, that Arsenal game. And he obviously does play in game week 26, where um, if you are loading up on double game week players, you're going to have a lot of players not playing like the Liverpool and Luton players um, also Phil Foden I've gone for there has been some talk that now that De Bruyne is back Haaland's back he could miss out but I think he'll play more often than not and I think um, three home games in the next two game weeks is is yeah is unmissable really so uh, Foden is definitely in and obviously that double in 25 is guaranteed for Man City Diego Jota so I think if Liverpool do double then I think he is essential especially now that Salah is out, there was some talk about Darwin Nunes being injured as well, but we'll talk about that later on in this section because I do have Darwin in the team currently. But yeah, Burnley at home, then a double game week of Luton at home and Brentford away for me is a no-brainer. Jota is on fire at the moment, so um, I think it should definitely be in your teams. Saka, yes, there's an argument to take out Arsenal players because their fixtures are not the best, but he plays in 26. He has a chance of playing in 29. And he has a really good fixture in 25 where you are will, will be looking to bench boost. So for that reason, I have gone for Saka. And to be honest, I think it's a bit harsh the 
I guess the criticism from an FPL point of view that he hasn't done it this season when I think he's been delivering and been very consistent throughout the whole season. Up front, I think Haaland is a is a must have and a potential triple captain if you don't end up playing your bench boost in game week 25. But again, we'll talk about that later on in the video. Um, again, the same fixtures as Foden. So um, Everton at home and then um, they're also a double game. We've got Chelsea at home, Brentford away. Darwin is a tricky one. So there was some rumours that he might have a bit of a knock. For me, if he does have a knock, then I'd probably go to Watkins. Yes, he doesn't have a double game week, but I think over the foreseeable future, he does have some really nice fixtures. So if Darwin does end up being injured, then I think Watkins um, is a good replacement. And it just means you, you, you've got one less transfer to make in game week 26 when Liverpool players do blank. Ivan Tony, I think, is essential for playing the wild card in game week 24 because... He has the double game week and he plays in 29, absolutely guaranteed, and he plays in 26. So for me, um, all of that into consideration, I think he is a must-have for 24. Um, before we move on to without um, Liverpool double draft, I just wanted to go through game week 25, game week 26, how the team will look and what transfers um, the team should make to, to end up having, I guess, the best possible team for 25 and 26 where potentially you could play the bench boost we'll get into that now so for game week 25 it all depends on i guess your your opinion and what you fancy doing so there are two options you could play your triple captain on Erling Haaland so obviously Haaland does have two home games against Chelsea and Brentford however there is another chance to play the bench boost and i think the bench does look really really good for this game week. So if you if you can see the team now, I've tried to go for, I guess, what my starting eleven would be without the bench boost. You could argue that it might look, it might look a bit different for you. So obviously play that out the way you want to play it. But in goal, it would be Dubravka. Um, with the bench boost, obviously you'd get Ariola with Forrest away, which I think is a really, really good fixture to have two goalkeepers in. For me, it does look very, very good. Defence would be Alexander-Arnold with Luton at home, Brentford away. And then Doherty with Liverpool away, Man United at home. Ake with a double game week of Chelsea at home, Brentford at home. And on the bench, you'd have Pinnock with Liverpool at home, Man City away. And Estupinan with Sheffield United away. So all double game weeks apart from Estupinan, who has Sheffield United, one of the worst teams in the league. So for me, that does look very, very good. You could argue that Pinnock deserves a starting place, but... For me, Gordon with Bournemouth at home probably just outweighs playing Pinnock. Yes, Pinnock gets two games, two appearance points. It's going to take Gordon to get at least an attack in return um, to match Pinnock, and Pinnock could get one clean sheet out of them too. So you could argue <clears throat> that that is probably better off playing Pinnock. But again, if you're not playing the bench boost, that's a decision for you to make. So like I said, Gordon with Bournemouth at home. Foden, again, two home games, Chelsea and Brentford, Diego Jota with Luton and Brentford away, um, Saka with Bournemouth away, so again, the single game week has a really good fixture, um, Haaland, as I said, with Foden, two home games, um, Darwin, again, the same games as Jota, and then Tony with Liverpool at home and Man City away. So again, um, it, for me, potentially, um, it depends on if Darwin is fit, because if Darwin is fit, then I think playing the bench boost does look really, really good. You could argue you're missing the best chance to play to play the triple captain, and that is definitely can be true. Um, however, you do have a, another couple of double game weeks later on in the season where that could see you maybe not get a better double uh, triple captain, but it may be a better time to play the triple captain. Um, but it does give you the option, if you do wildcard in 24, to play the bench boost in 20 in 25 because that bench with a doubler with a stooping hand against Sheffield United away, Ganacho against Luton away and Ariola against Forest away. For me, it does look very, very strong. So for game week 26, obviously Liverpool and Luton do blank. So um, a couple transfers are going to need to be made and you will have two transfers if you do follow this, this, I guess, strategy. Um, Ariola is preferred over the Brev Cup with Brentford at home. A stooping hand, Everton at home, Pinnock, West Ham away, and Ake with Bournemouth away. Gordon, Arsenal away. Again, not the easiest fixture, but at least he has a fixture. 
Foden, Bournemouth away, Ganacho, Fulham at home. So again, that bench player comes in with a very good fixture. Um, and Saka with Newcastle at home. And then you've got Harlem, Bournemouth away. Um, then you do Darwin to Watkins with Forrest at home, which I think is a very nice move. So again, if Darwin is not fit, then you already have Watkins. So you kind of have another transfer to play with. You could maybe go for someone like uh, maybe take out a City option or take out Gordon with, a, with a not a great fixture in this game week. You do have options and you do have spare transfers with this strategy. Um, and then obviously, yeah, Tony up front. So for me, overall, if Liverpool do double, I think it is a very good game week to play the bench boost if you are wild carding in game week 24. If not, it's another discussion, which we'll go on to next. So we'll move on to how a wild card may look without Liverpool and Luton Dublin. So <clears throat> obviously I've left out Liverpool and Luton players, but by leaving out them players, it does allow you to, I guess, build a better squad with better Man City options, I think is the crucial part. So again, the same goalkeepers, so I won't go into them, Dubravka and Areola. In defence, you do have a bit of a change. So Botman does come in. Um, I do think Botman does give you a couple nice game weeks um, and he plays in, in game week 26, which I think is a, a pretty, um, I guess, big big bonus, especially with being able to have Poro now. So as you don't have the Liverpool options and Luton options to deal with, you can afford to carry Poro in that double game week. <clears throat> I've also gone for a stupid answer. That stayed the same. Um, and then instead of Pinnock, I've actually gone for um no, I've gone for Pinnock as well, but I've gone for Moreno um instead of Ake. So I do think Moreno is is a very very nice option if teams are not doubling in game week twenty uh, five. So City will still double, so that's fair enough. But um Liverpool not doubling, you don't need Trent, you don't need Doherty who's not doubling and they're blanking. So for me, um I think the defense does look a little bit stronger, albeit you don't have Trent Alexander-Arnold for the game week against uh, Burnley, which for me is a is a risky one. But um, yeah, it does look it does still look like a good defense. But without Trent, it does allow you to have De Bruyne. Um, I think the money you save on not having Liverpool assets means you can get De Bruyne, <clears throat> and I think that's a really really nice upside if it doesn't end up being a double. You get to have the Bruyne, Foden and Haaland, which is absolutely massive. Um, and it means you can skip on the likes of Jota, you can skip on Trent, but and you can save the money. Saka and Gordon and Ganacho are the same. And then the strike force are the same as well. But obviously you'd go for Watkins instead of Darwin, which you might end up doing anyway. Um, but obviously this just locks it in. We'll go on to how the team will look for game at 25 in the double and game at 26 in the blank. So for game week 25 without Liverpool and Luton doubling, um, it is a bit different, I'd say, but um, I just don't think it's worth playing the bench boost if they don't double because you, you're going to have basically all single game week players on your bench. You're going to have half a team basically of single game week players. And for me, I just don't think it's worth it. I don't think the bench is that strong um, enough to kind of play the free hit and it does allow you to play the triple captain. So... Again, the Bravka um, plays, Pinnock plays. You got Pedro Porro with Wolves at home and a stupid name with Sheffield United away. There is an argument that Moreno potentially deserves a spot in here, but for me, I think that is the strongest um, back three. Again, you've got De Bruyne now, um, which is massive rather than Ake. So I do I think that's a big plus potentially if Liverpool don't double. Um, and then Saka and Gordon are the same. And then up front, Watkins with Fulham away. Tony with a double and Haaland captain, but that can definitely be triple captain. So if Liverpool and Luton don't double and you, you are playing your wild card in 24, I think Haaland triple captain is the best strategy to go for. I just don't think the bench is strong enough and worthy enough to use your bench boost in, um, comparing it to later on in the season where there's going to be more doubles and, and yeah, more teams will be doubling. So you might even have a bench full of doubles, but um, I can completely see why. You're obviously going to have to build up to them doubles with just transfers as you've, as you've already used your your free hit. But again, you have a few game weeks to do that. You have the biggest doubles in 37, so you have a 12 game weeks to do that, which I think is doable. Um, but we'll move on to the blank game week 26 now and see how the team will look. 
So in game week 26, I guess your your only blank game week player will be Pedro Porro, as Liverpool, like I said, and Luton don't don't are not in your team because they're not doubling. Um, you could argue that you're going to miss out on a few Liverpool assets because of that, but a Liverpool points. But for me, I just don't think it's worth it. Anyway, so you've got um, basically a full team apart from Pedro Porro. And for me, you can make the luxury transfer. Again, it all depends on on at that stage who's going to have a fixture in game week 29. So we'll know by game week 26 whether that is Chelsea, that is Aston Villa, that is Arsenal, et cetera, et cetera. Because all of the FA Cup games will be decided um, in terms of blank game weeks, et cetera. So for me, I have done the transfer of Gordon, who had Arsenal um, away, to uh, Neto again you could argue that Gordon is a very good player and Gordon I guess can score against anyone however Pedro Neto with Sheffield United at home he potentially has a double in 34 and he potentially has a fixture in game week 29 for me that's enough to to bring him in um, but again at this stage you don't know what the game week 29 fixtures are going to be so I'd probably just wait till then Overall, if you are looking to play a wild card in game week 24, I'll definitely, definitely wait. You should definitely hear before the game week 24 deadline if there's going to be a double game week for Liverpool and Luton. If not, I actually don't mind the, the wild card where you go with that Liverpool and go with that Luton players. It allows you to load up on City players, allows you to get a few um, blank game week 29 players. However, it is a it is a tough decision. Don't get me wrong. It is a tough decision. I would basically, if you if you're if Liverpool and Luton are not doubling, I would look at your city your assets. Do you have Haaland? Do you have one of Foden and De Bruyne? If the answer is yes, then I'd probably I'd probably not wild card because I don't think Ivan Tony and Pinnock are worth that. To be honest, worth wild carding over. If your team's in complete disarray, then fair enough. Completely understand. It's not a bad week to wild card. However, if you think you can get through it and get them main city assets in, then I probably wouldn't play it. I'll probably save it for a later date. That was it for this video. Um, good luck for the game week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.